Welcome to Mondo and Friends presented by Verizon. My name is Mondo Fresco and today I am with actor, visionary, upcoming director, Jesse Garcia. How's it going, dude? What's up, man? I'm excited to, to, to have a chat with you, dude. I know. I know. Oh, you knew that already. Oh, I know you're excited. Oh. But I'm also excited. You sensed it. Yeah. Look, dude, I, I've been seeing you killing the game for, for a while. I want to know your journey. All right. I want to know, first and foremost, where Jesse Garcia first fell in love mm. with his craft. Do you remember that? Well, my journey is interesting because I, I, I never really set out to be an actor. It wasn't like this wasn't uh, uh, like a goal or a burning desire for me when I was a kid. You know, like a lot of actors are they, they knew when they were five years old doing plays and stuff like that in front of their parents. Like I never had that. I was... Um, Going to school in the University of Nebraska on a cheerleading scholarship. Did you know that? I did not know that, yeah. dude. Yeah, so I got a cheerleading scholarship, which is a, it's a, funny, it's a fun story. One, uh, when I was playing football in high school, during senior year, our football coach took us to a University of Wyoming football game. And we got there early enough to see the cheerleaders warming up. And, and they did the, the stunt where they, the hands on the butt, it's called the chair, right? Yeah. And it was just like really hot cheerleaders and and these dudes are all jacked i'm like oh i can do that um and the cheer, high school cheerleading coach goes you know they get scholarships for that right i'm like word and she goes yeah i go maybe i'll quit football and wrestling and become a cheerleader um uh, which i never did but i would tease her throughout this the school year and um after wrestling season she had lined me up with a tryout at the eastern wyoming college wow at, for the small junior college in wyoming uh, to, to go try out. So I went and tried out and, and I hung out with everybody. So like, like an hour or something, hour and a half, just tossing my friend Susie around and, um, and they go, yeah, well, you show great potential. You're already doing some of them, some of the stunts pretty, pretty good. So, well, if you want, come, come to the school and we'll give you a scholarship. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, cool. I'll be, be here in the fall. Yeah. And it was like the only college that I looked at and, and, uh, and I went to Eastern Wyoming and Torrington, Wyoming and had a lot of fun for two years. And, Sent a bunch of tryout tapes, my first audition tapes, right? So I, I, I sent them out uh, to a bunch of schools in Utah and Hawaii, I think Texas too, I don't remember. But um, I sent one to Nebraska, and Nebraska had the best scholarship. And I got a call at the last second. I was going to go to University of Wyoming because I'd end up getting a scholarship there too. A small one, it wasn't great. And um, I got the call on Thursday. They said, be here by you know tomorrow if you can. I said, cool, I'll be there Saturday. It's the best I can do. So I get there and it's basically full ride with all the extra scholarships and stuff that I got. But one of my friends in one of my classes at the end of the school year, um, uh, we were in, in the, in, in the, on campus talking about uh, what we wanted to do with our lives. She's 5'10", beautiful. And she goes, I'd love to be an actor, model, something like that. You know, I'm 21. She's 19. And I go, yeah, that'd be dope. That'd be fun. Cause I, you know, I always wanted to do a play, yeah. but just for fun, you know what I mean? But I didn't have time because like sports took up all of my time. And the one thing I regret about college is that I didn't take the classes that I, sh that I wanted to take, right? Like the art classes and pottery and photography and stuff like that. I, that, I did all the exercise science classes, all the chemistry and yeah. all the classes that that I hated. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and all the general ed stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, the stuff that I needed to, to get a degree of some sort of an yeah, exercise yeah. science, which I probably was never going to get because I just didn't like school. Um, uh, in college, I just like, my mind was my, 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 the different, it was a, the education that I wanted that school couldn't have given to me. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and she said she's gonna, she was going to go to this actor model search thing in Chicago. And, um, and I go, dope, let me know how it goes. You know, I kind of forgot about it because I'm going to the gym, lifting weights and partying with my friends. And I see her like a month later on campus and she goes, I went and I got invited to go to this school in Atlanta. You should come with me. And I'm like, nah, you know, I'm good. You know, I'm in my head and I'm thinking, one, I don't, I don't know you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> two... I don't know you three I have a full ride scholarship. Basically and my life is easy, right? I'm not paying $250 a month in rent and I'm wow. it's chill. And I was getting ready to go uh, around the country and teach uh, UCA, UCA, UCA cheerleading camps. Wow. So I was ready to be like the cheerleading coach and yeah. party and have fun and hang out with a bunch of girls, you know? <laughs> um, 
And then I ended up going to one of these actor model search things, the things that sweep through the country that yep. everybody wastes their money on. I knew I wasn't a model, but I was like, wow, let's go check it out. And of course, I didn't get anything. Nobody scouted me. Nobody, nobody cares that I was there. But I was like, what's this acting thing? Like for something, was, something was there that clicked that I was like, ah, yeah. there's something with acting. And I called this girl again. Her name is Jennifer Drosick. And um, I go, tell, him, tell me more about the school. And she goes, well, I've actually been talking to Judson Vaughn, who's the, the teacher of the school. And um, I've been telling him about you. And he wants to talk to you. And I got on the phone with him for about 45 minutes. And him, as a producer, director himself, uh, and a w working actor, has done a bunch of really cool stuff. He, he's looking at it, go, oh, this, like, he was thinking ahead, you know. He was, he, he was kind of ahead of the curve. like, Latino kid, wants to be, be an actor. There's not very many. And, um, you know, I was in pretty good shape. And I was, you know, funny or whatever. Um, and within that 45 minute phone call, I decided I was going to drop everything in Nebraska. I dropped a full white scholarship. I dropped like wow. easy life to move to Atlanta with this, my friend, uh, and go study acting. So I packed up, as soon as I hung up the phone, I packed up everything, like everything, 95% of the stuff I had accumulated in Nebraska, drove eight hours back to my hometown in Wyoming, get there at three in the morning. Uh, my parents go like, Hey, what are you doing? Like random knock at three in the morning. I didn't tell nobody I was coming home. And I'm like, oh, you know, school's out. I'm going to just come back for a second. And um, I start to bring in stuff like mountain bike, TV, VCR, yeah. stuff that I had accumulated, that yeah. stuff that I wouldn't fit in the car yeah. to drive to, to, to Atlanta. And they're talking about you know, like life and moving maybe and uh, f for work. And I'm like, well, speaking of moving, I'm going to move to Atlanta, Georgia in a week. And they're like, oh, oh, for what? I go, I'm, I'm going to try acting. And they both kind of go, okay well let us know if you need any help and my i, I was tripping because they weren't tripping because my mom was tripping <laughs> that i wanted to move three hours away to my first junior college right yeah, yeah. And now i'm moving across country um and so i stayed there for about a week my nephew had just been born and i uh, went back to nebraska picked up this girl drove straight through to atlanta the next day which was like 17 hours or something it was a brutal trip um get there uh, we ended up staying with Judson for a couple weeks and uh, slept on his, he had a spare bedroom and um, uh, started acting classes that week. And like wow. it was from, from, I knew from the trip down, like I'm going to make it work. It's like, I'm going to make it work. It seems like you kind of knew the minute you hung up on that yeah. call. Yeah. And, the, and, and the, it's funny because I have a, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's past lives or I don't know. Uh, who who's talking to me in my head or what yeah. the what, what the what the whoever's guiding me or whatever it is but I had a conversation with myself and this was kind of like a, it was uh, uh, um, ahead of uh, my, my own voice was ahead of yeah. itself right mm -hmm. so the, the conversation I had in my, my head was okay I'm, I don't know what to expect I, I don't know what Atlanta is going to be like I don't know if it's going to be like a bunch of actors and like parties and making movies or whatever it is. I had no idea. Of course, it was not, nothing like that, right? Um, but the conversation I had with myself on the road trip was, all right, I want to be, I want to get to a point where I'm successful enough that I can open the doors and bring other people up. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically Latinos, but I don't care. Whoever wants to work, whoever needs an opportunity, whoever yep. wants to do it, right? Whether it's directing, producing, acting, writing, uh, catering, whatever it is, costumes. Um, I want to get to that point where I'm opening doors and lifting people up with me. Amazing. Right. And, and, and I, I don't know why I had that conversation with myself, Yeah. but I may have been able to over the years, been able to, to hook friends up and like point, you know, things that weren't right for me in my friends directions or give, you know, people jobs or like help my, help friends get their first studio gigs, which now they're execs and stuff like that. Um, um, but that's, that's how, that's the start and I, first, I started act, uh, classes that week and I think I don't know four or five months after I got there I booked my booked my first movie off for my first audition what did landing your first gig through your first audition do for your confidence at that at that point I, ha I hadn't I hadn't heart, I, don't, I hadn't had my heart broken yet yeah right yeah so it was kind of like one of those things like oh all right, let's go. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I had 
So this movie called Boycott, and I was on set and I was just background because the director was in town and he had come to class and kind of spoke to us a little bit. And, um, and I was shy. I probably could have got thrown a line if I would have went and said hello to him. But I'm like, I'm just going to sit back and learn. And um, I arrested Aaron Neville. You know what I mean? I put him in a car. I was like, yeah, yeah. Nobody knew. So I picked that guy. And, it, and I was like the only Latino guy on, on set because everyone's black, right? Yeah, yeah. And I go, oh, okay, I see how this works. There's a camera there. There's light there. This is where this, okay, this is how it works. I get it. And I, I, and I had a kind of an understanding of it very very quickly so when i booked the the movie the movie the audition happened i think the very next day or like within a week or something somebody had dropped out of the movie uh that my friends were doing and they go this is a new guy in class he could be great you should check him out so i went on set and read the lines and auditioned and kind of did this thing and and they go great can you be here seven o'clock tomorrow you know we'll figure out costumes and all that stuff in the morning i'm like sick uh -oh. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll be there and it was my first stereotype role I, the name is mexican leaf blower that's what the name is on the card no, you were mexican was, leaf, lo leaf, leaf blower, leaf blower. Yeah, number yeah, yeah. one number, yeah, no, number one the, and only <laughs> the mexican leaf blower yeah. that's that's crazy man now I'm, I'm at this time how old are you now i'm 44 now I mean, no, like not oh. then, then at, at, uh, at that, that point. Uh, I just turned twenty. And by the way, you look great for forty-four. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. So I, no drinking, eat right. Yep. No smoking. Exercising. Exercising every day. So throwing people up in the air now. <sighs> During parties. Yeah. <laughs> On the weekends it's party, only. It's a party trick. <laughs> <laughs> at, at, at that point, how, how old were you then? I was 21. You're 21. I was, I was 21 yeah, when dude, I started. That's a lot. That's a lot of movement. In, yeah, man. In, in that what, like year or two. Yeah, yeah. And I, and it, and at the time, Atlanta wasn't a big, like a really big market. You know, what mm -hmm. I mean, there was stuff going through uh, there, but this was like pre self tapes. This was pre kind of like I would have to drive. What was it? Five, seven hours or whatever it is to Wilmington, North Carolina, to do a co-star yeah. audition, right? And it was a long way. Sometimes you would, and the op there was just wasn't any opportunities in Atlanta. I just went for the classes and I went to kind of learn. Um, but I would do those trips all the time. Once I, once I got an agent, I got an agent pretty quickly. Um, um, and I never booked anything out of those. I always did kind of local things and some random stuff that I hope never comes out. <laughs> but, um, but might now. Um, um, but yeah, man, it was it was fast and furious. And I was like, kind of had, had the hunger for it. It's like I got. Like we're, we're writing in class, like we're, we're, we're directing and we're producing and we're doing showcases and we're kind of like some, they were shooting our own projects, you know what I mean? What would you say is, is that casting that changes your, your career and, and kind of pushes you to, to the next level? What would you say? So I had always been proactive, right? When I was, I, I somehow got the breakdowns, the casting breakdowns. So the, where the casting breakdowns are is like a list of roles in the project that, uh, that they're looking for actors for for the parts, right? Um, I would get the casting breakdowns, and and I didn't know any better because, uh, say for a TV show, like say NCIS was looking for somebody, and there would be a co-star, guest star, you know, want you know, like whoever, right? Yeah. Um, and I would send my headshot from Atlanta to somewhere in LA, just maybe to get noticed. Right to maybe get a chance to audition for this thing, and I was still living. I was still living in Atlanta, uh, or I would be online trying to find castings like Craigslist or mm -hmm. some sort of casting website. And um, now casting, I think now casting was one of them. Short films, student films, indie films. I was always hustling, always trying to do something. I could end up booking some stuff, uh, or at least getting auditions. And um, and then I, I I got out of Atlanta what I needed to get out of Atlanta, and I was like December. Like November, I told myself in November, I'm like, cool, I'm, I'm moving to LA next month. I'm going to go. It's time. Um, so I packed up everything. I gave myself like a month, which is a long time for me because I usually pack up and leave <laughs> at a moment's notice. Um, uh, got here, I think December 3rd or 4th in, uh, in 2003. Um, and got back to it i got back to on finding whatever casting online things were here um submitting myself i booked a couple small things and then i saw a casting for this movie called quinceanera yep right 
And I had done a casting workshop with Jason Wood, the casting director for Quinceanera uh, in Atlanta, two or three years, two years, I'm going to say two years prior. And um, it was a great workshop. One of the casting director in, um, in Atlanta hooked it up. She told me, you need to meet Jason. Jason's in LA. Da, 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 da. So I did this workshop over the weekend. And he says, if, you ever, if you're ever in LA and you need, you know, you guys are in town, hit me up. Let me know you're in town. The snap. So I saw that he was casting and I emailed him. I was like, hey, I don't know if you've cast the lead yet, but I'd love to read for it if you guys haven't. And he emailed me back. He's like, no, I have it. Come on in. So, um, so I went in, I prepped it, and he goes, come back Friday. Come back Friday. We'll do a work session. This was in early 2005. So I'd been here a little over a, little over a year, right? Okay. Um, uh, he goes, come back Friday. We'll do a work session before the meet with the directors and da 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 and we went through the work session and the stuff that he was telling me to do i'm like my instincts say it's wrong but i'm gonna listen to him because he's a well-known casting director mm -hmm. i'm gonna i'm gonna do it so i did we came in we did the, we did the take and the directors go oh it's really great except yeah i don't think he smiles a lot and i don't think he does this and that no i look at the casting director and yeah kind of gave him the look he goes no 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 okay we worked a little bit earlier that's why he was doing it you know let's just do it again so we did it again, and, and I'm like, oh, okay. So they's like, do you mind sticking around and breeding with a couple girls? And so I read a few girls, and then Emily Rios came in. I'm like, like I don't, I don't know who you're picking for my role, but that's the girl. Yeah, that's the girl. Like she's unbelievable. And um, and then like I got a call. I left, and I got a call. I don't know that day or the next day. I said, hey, if you want to do the movie, um, there's no money in it. I think I got paid a thousand dollars to do this movie and it was a non-union movie. Wow. And, um, we did it. It was magical. And we all kind of felt like this was, this was something, something good, special, something yeah. special. And, um, and that was when I did that, it kind of gave me some confidence. Right. And then, um, later that summer, which is another good story. Like I, I booked walkout HBO walkout mm. with, um, Edward James almost. Wow. It seems like that, that uh, a quinceanera film, right? It was one of those. Um, it's like a it's like a fan favorite, mm. right? Like it, it, at the, at that point, you're probably thinking, well, let's see what comes out of it. But yeah. it, it became like a fan favorite. I'm yeah. sure people still walk up to you and they're like, I loved you yeah. in that film. Yeah, I have a. a, a so I, was, I did Narcos, Mexico, and when I was there, <laughs> when I was there, there's a a, um, a bookstore that was owned by an American. Yeah, and. We're, we're, I was walking around and it's now, what are you doing in town? And we're not really supposed to say what we're doing in town because we don't need the attention and, and blah, blah, blah. Um, but it seems safe enough. So I'm here working on a show with my friend and he goes, oh, well, have you done anything else? I'm like, ah, I did this small movie called Quinceanera. And he goes, oh, oh man, yeah, 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 I've seen it. I'm like, yeah, I'm the lead guy. He's like, oh, yeah, it used to be so hot. I'm like, <laughs> What? <laughs> You're like you don't know you don't know yeah. how to take that at yeah, that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, but every now and then I'll get recognized from that. <laughs> it's funny that's one of your most memorable ones. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's the one that that kind of gave me the momentum to do a lot of the movies that I did after that. Um, and for whatever reason, whatever the universe was telling me that it wasn't it wasn't my time, uh, you know, 15 years ago. But it was uh, I, another movie I did. Days of Wrath never came out. It was with Wilmer Valderrama, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Lawrence Fishburne was in it, a bunch of rappers. It was, it's a good movie. It just never came out. Yeah. So there was, for whatever reason, the, the universe wanted me to, to, you know, to grind a little bit for another 15 years. I, I, I like to, to ask this question to, to like musicians and artists. Mm -hmm. um, you as, a, as, a, as an actor, as an artist yourself, um, what is the the craziest place that that you've seen a film or, or yourself on TV or something where you walked in and, and and they had they had one of your your projects on on the screen? Do you, do you recall any on the screen? Like any of that playing? those moments? Yeah, just playing. Oh, like, oh wow. Man. Um, no, I think I get more like people texting me from or messaging me from around the world saying like NCIS is on or something. Or, yeah. Or catching me from like an old CSI Miami or something. Um, now, right, the, the moment I'm having right now, now is kind of like the wildest time. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's talk about that, man. Flaming hot. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, that's already have already a fan favorite. Speaking yeah. of fan favorite favorites. And, and we were talking earlier off, 
off camera, off mic, and, and you were telling me that this is this one is a little different for you. Yeah. How so? Latinos don't often get a chance to do these kind of roles, right? And I'm a testament to it. Like I've gotten to do some really dope roles over the years um, from The Mother, which is kind of like a really great action movie. Shows me can I can do all the action stuff. Yep. Kind of still have a really fun um, moment with Jen, have a good scene. Even the small moments that we have throughout the movie are, are really great. Um, you know, I've gotten to do some funny stuff, some some family film stuff, like a small part in uh, the original Alexander in a Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. A, uh, and it was it was great and um but this one i this flaming hot i got to do everything i got to hit every beat that you would want to hit there's a little bit tiny little bit of action in there there was uh the emotional stuff the funny stuff the really kind of silly and offbeat stuff and my buddy zane holtz who i did um uh, um from dust till dawn with he goes this is as close to you as anything's ever gonna get because I got to be weird I got to be funny I got to be emotional I got to do all the things um and we don't get that chance very often yeah. you know what I mean like how many there's a handful of there's only literally a handful of actors Latinos especially who get that chance anyone really is like especially us but we don't we don't really get that chance yeah yeah what do you recall from being on set what's uh what's uh something that stood out for you not like in a like a fun memory but more so like a like a core memory for yourself we so I, eva and i've known each known of each other for since quinceanera so like since 2006 you know um well how long how long was that so like almost 17 16 17 years something yeah like that. yeah and but we didn't really get to know each other until the casting process and then when i booked it um, um, the, the, the audition process was, was pretty tough. When I, the, the second I read the script, I go, oh, this is mine. Like, this is mine. This was written. This was, I felt like this was written for me. Like this was written in my voice. This is written in my bones. Like this was written for me. All I have to do is put in the work and let these guys run through all of these other actors to figure out if Jesse's the best one. Right. He's the what he's the right one for this role. He I, like I felt like the humor that it needed, that the the emotional moments that it needed. I could I've been working for 20 years to to to, to get to this movie. Um, and so when I did book it, Eve and I had well, we rehearsed a lot. Like we were we were there probably three weeks early, three or four weeks early for I had three different wig changes. Uh, for four, four different decades, um, prosthetic mustache, you know, we kind of like chin, uh, the goatee and all kinds of stuff, tons of prep. I've never yeah. done this much prep before. Uh, costume changes, like 50, some, like 50, at least 50 costume changes. So like I was, and, wow. and we, and we shot fast. We shot like a TV show. This wasn't like a normal, huge, it's a huge studio movie, but it wasn't like, like we didn't have time. We shot in 35 days. Wow. And and Eva goes, we're going to we're going to shoot this like a TV show. Like there's everyone has got to be ready every day, all day. Um, but there was also a looseness to it. You know, what I mean, like we were had the freedom to play and figure out sometimes Eva and I would rewrite on the day because mm -hmm. something wasn't working or we thought we thought of something else or something's funny. And she would let me bring in jokes and like stuff that would add a little flavoring and color yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah. Right. But her and I throughout the rehearsal process, the last day. I sat down with her and I go, I need to trust, I need you to trust me. I have the full amount of trust in you. Like, I need you to trust me. Like there might be t times I'm doing weird stuff, but there's a process to it. And, and, and we need to have that. And I, I'm, I'm asking like, do we have that? And she goes, yeah. And I go, let's go to war. Let's go. And it was like that every day. And for me, it's like I was on the verge of a breakdown every day. Not because I didn't think I thought I belonged there, right? But because there was a huge responsibility. We all had something to prove. Mm -hmm. Like Eva, as a, a, a Latina first-time featured director, um, uh, Devon is a black producer on a Latino project. Uh, uh, Annie, as you know, uh, as someone who isn't quite well known, even though she's been in the business for a yeah. long time. Love Annie Gonzalez. I love her. love her. 
Um, and me, who's like been in the industry, people know who I am, but they haven't had a chance to see me do all the things. You know what I mean? They haven't had a chance to see me be in 90, 95% of the, the movie. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we all felt the weight. And I had tons of dialogue and I, you know, the wig changes every day. I was one of the first ones there uh, every day and one of the last ones to leave. Yep. Right. And the, besides, you know, like Transpo and all that, some of the crew who were there longer. But and and I loved going to work there every day. Um, um, and it was it was just one of those. It, it was a, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. And and, and the, just like just. Just, just like the surface tension of me yeah. almost losing it every day for one reason or another. It was there. And nobody knew about it. I was the only one that knew. Annie caught me one day. Mm -hmm. Annie caught me one day and she was, she's such a beautiful soul. And she yeah. goes, I see you. Um, but I think we did, a, I think we made a beautiful movie. Do you feel like that emotion, that feeling added to your performance? Maybe. I mean, it didn't, I don't think it hurt it. Um, it was, it's, and I think part of the theme of the movie is that, um, that Richard had uh, a strong support system, right? Annie is the, the heartbeat of the movie. And Ju which, Judy, Judy's the heartbeat of the movie. And um, I had her, I had the other actors, I had the crew, everyone was making the same movie. Like okay. everybody was making the same movie. Um, and, e and, and Eva, Eva and I, I, I don't know what it is. We have a, some crazy cosmic connection that we see each other, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're, must have been twins or something in a past life or something because we can, we connect on a, on like a really deep cosmic spiritual level. Um, so it was like, there was never conflict. There was like, let's go, let's yep. do it. Let's do that. Let's try it. Let's see, let's see what happens. Yeah. When you're in the, in, in that moment of, of playing a, a, a true life, uh, a, a, an individual, a person, a real life person, which is Richard Montañez. How is, how does that differ? How is that different from playing just say a made up character? I had a chance to meet, I don't, he's been with like a lot of my friends know him and he's been in the circles of like my friends, different friends for, for many, many years. And I just, for some, whatever reason, I just never met him. Um, I had a chance to go meet with him like, like three days or four days before I left for Albuquerque to shoot the movie. And I went to his house and it was a warm welcoming and, and, and Judy had made enchiladas for me and which I was on a serious diet cause I had COVID weight. Um, uh, uh, did you eat him though? I didn't eat him. You didn't. I didn't eat him. <laughs> I didn't eat him. I told her, I promised her I would eat her food another time. If you make me a steak, it's a different story. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it was, uh, I get, you know, they're both lovely and warm and welcoming. And, and at, at the same time, you know, like there was a little, I could tell, I was like, all right, this is the guy that's going to play me. Let's, let's, let's see who this dude is, you know? Like, so it was a little healthy kind of like size, size me up. And you know what I mean? Like, let's see who this guy is. And, um, and, and my main, the main purpose for me of going in to meet with him was like to make him and Judy and the family, which his sons were there and his family was there. Let them feel comfortable. Let them know that we're not going to do them wrong. Let them know mm -hmm. that we're going to we're going to tell a beautiful story, because they they're in a very vulnerable position. Because we said we told a lot of story, part of the story of them growing up and like their lifestyle when they were young. They were gangsters and they dealt drugs and um, um, and it was just there was there was a, a hard life. You know, they lived the life. Yeah. To where they are now, like this Christian family who's very motivation. Like Richard goes and does motivational speaking. Um, so they were. They just, they were scared, which rightly so, you know what I mean? Um, but I would ask him like questions like what the pet names they had for each other or like their kids and if he had, if he carried stuff in his pockets for work or um, ran, like things like that, you yeah. know, like slang because the slang changes over the years, you know what I mean? Mm. So we would, we, I would keep those things. I would keep those things in my pocket over, over the course of the movie and you'll see a bunch of things when you watch it. Um, there was... So when, uh, and I left and I go, oh, and I had the conversation with him too. I go, once I get comfortable, so I'm like, look, man, I, I have to let you know, um, like, I'm not going to be doing an impression of you. I'm not going to be mimicking you. I'm not going to mimic your walk. I'm not going to mimic the way you talk, your accent. Um, I'm going to be 
doing my version of your story mm. um, and, and with, a, with honor and respect. It's like you just have to, you just got to trust the process. You got to trust us that we're going to do the right thing. And that there might be some things that we say or improvise that you guys may not have said exactly or may not be the right thing or it might be moments in the story that aren't exactly. Because we're not making a documentary. This is a movie. It's the entertainment business. Right. We're, we got to entertain folks for, you know, an hour and a half plus for them to want to stay in the seats and not, and not you know, not go grab popcorn. Um, uh, and he goes, oh, oh, okay. Okay, and I could tell. I was like, "Just, just trust the process. It's gonna be great." And we had left, and I had we had a great talk, and we took pictures, and, and he showed me his tattoos, and and um and I left, and he when we when we started, finally started shooting, he came to set, and his family came to set, and they have a cameo in it, like uh, Annie yeah. and I. They have a have a scene with those two in the park. It's really great. Um, and there was one scene where. Uh, he's getting arrested, right? In the beginning of the movie where he gets arrested and it's kind of a turning point in his life. Annie and I are in the car. I'm driving and she's yelling at me because I was driving in a stolen car and the cop comes behind and, and arrests me. So it's, in a real, it's a real moment in the story. Um, and they call cut and, and they're on Video Village watching on the monitors and we go back and they're ever like they're crying and Eva's crying everyone's like she's like I actually hit him when that happened and like all the things that the, the every everything was almost verbatim like what Annie and I were doing and we were improvising and kind of trying to make the best of the scene and um and we're all hugging each other and and I, and, and Richard and I hug and he kind of grabs me and he goes I get it now wow I get it I get what you're doing it's like keep doing that you know, so because, you know, when, when you're making when you're making a big puzzle, yeah. you know, a 10,000 piece puzzle, each puzzle is the, a micro to the macro. And you don't always see where these puzzle pieces connect to each other. And once they start connecting, you go, oh, I'm starting to see the picture. Right. So they, they that was the moment they saw that what we were doing, we were going to take care of them. Yeah. Is, is uh, that that moment where he says, OK, I get it. Hmm. Did that feel like a like a cosign? Did that feel like like yeah. a like a good? All right, let's let's keep it going. Yeah, yeah. I go. You haven't seen anything yet, man. We just started this movie. Like we're gonna we're you, you're not gonna be able, you're not gonna believe what we're gonna do, because Eva's a visionary, man. She's the trailblazer. She's she I, I, even when when I got to set the stuff that we were doing, I'm like, I, I gotta I'm taking notes because she does she's so prepared. She's unlike any other director I've ever worked with, and I worked with some pretty good directors and she's taken inspiration from a lot of really great directors and other great directors go i see you yeah yeah you mentioned eva longoria's uh feature directorial debut uh i feel like a lot of people have been talking about that mm -hmm. and i'm sure you've been asked you know how was it working with eva um what do you take from from eva moving forward She's so prepared. She's so prepared. And it's, um, um, and she's in a really great position in life where she's done, she's been directing for 10 plus years doing TV, right? And um, she's a well-respected director and, and she gets hired a lot. Uh, and what, you know, Devon Franklin, the producer, he laughs because, you know, what Eva wants, Eva gets. And it's not. And she goes, don't tell me no. Tell me how. Yeah. Like there's there's a way. She goes if I'm if I if I there's a no, I'm not asking the right question, or I'm asking the wrong person. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> and she got it done, man. Like she she goes, "We this I want this location for this." And Devon go, "I'll figure it out." She goes, and they go, "Let's figure it out." So she's very um determined, right? And and um um and, and she has and people like her. Yeah, she's really likable. You know what I mean. Yeah, and she's been doing this for a long time. She's got a, a, a master's in Chicano studies. She was the perfect person for this. Like she, just like Annie and I were the perfect ones for this. Like she was the perfect person for this, and Devon Franklin was the perfect person for this. You know, you and you and Annie. How was how was that that relationship, that friendship? Like, did, I'm sure you guys knew each other from from just being in the industry. Did yeah, you guys were you guys uh, friends? Is there so I met her. I met her from an event, I think the NHMC event, uh, maybe a year and a half, 
prior, I think right before COVID, I think right before COVID happened. And um, I, I was a fan of hers and, and uh, we, we loved on each other a little bit, followed each other on Instagram and, and just kind of sometimes a message, message back and forth. And it was like, that was kind of like, you know, one of those things where we knew each other. Yep. Um, but when I found out that she was going to test for Judy, I Instagrammed her. I was like, hey, I'm, I'm testing too. We should, we should get together and kind of link up and like run lines and hang out a little bit. And this is in the middle of COVID, you know what I mean? So everyone's kind of like, like staying you know in their own bubble or whatever but she came over and we ran lines and laughed and talked about stuff i'm like oh this is gonna be easy mm-hmm. and like we would look at each other like stand next to each other in the mirror and go oh yeah, we look great together this is <laughs> this is it right here this is it um but we i like to tease her and we have a lot of fun and um she's tease her how just tease her like she's just i just give her a hard time yeah. like, like brother and sister more yeah. than anything um, but she's lovely and she's beautiful and she's funny and she just, she brought it. She brought, she is Judy, you know, like she, they grew up in the same, like she's from, Annie's from East LA and she grew up in LA and, um, she's just perfect. Yeah. Annie, Annie Gonzalez, her energy is, <sighs> is unlike any, any other. She yeah. walked in here, uh, maybe two years ago now. Like the Mexican and- Tasmanian devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and we still talk about her till this day. Uh, I, you know, like I mentioned prior to, to shooting, um, a lot of people bring her up and that's the, the, the impression that, yeah. that she, that she leaves, yeah. you know, on, on people. Um, she also has, uh, uh, she has a record for, uh, most bleeps here on Mondo and Friends. Oh, funny. Beep, 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 oh, beep, 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 beep. We can fix that. <laughs> you you, you want to break you break that record or <laughs> we'll see we might, we might have a quick run yeah fred our dp and, and editor he was like how do i even, how do i edit this together <laughs> can annie ah. <laughs> that's 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 amazing man uh yeah man I, the cast is just is just incredible all um, stars yeah man and, and and it's like you said it's it's almost like the the perfect moment for a lot of your your castmates to to kind of rise to the next level yeah and and you know you guys have been doing your thing for for a while but it's just like this this celebratory like celebration graduation yeah even right well i uh, Eva had gone through a bunch of different people to try to find uh, Vacho, the, the character that, for, to play my dad. And but one day I go, have you looked at Emilio? Emilio? Emilio was like, ah, of course. And he sent the tape and I'm like, she goes, yeah, it was Emilio. I'm like, I told you. <laughs> you know what I mean? like he's, yeah, yeah. he's perfect for it. And um, I got my buddy uh, Alejandro Montoya a gig because he's a, he's a local in, in uh, Albuquerque. He's a director. He's not really even an actor. And I, I go, dude, send a tape in. This is what you do. Do it like this, blah, 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 blah. Got it. Um, and there's a lot of like newer faces too that are that just, just kill it. Just kill it. Yeah, I like this, this Chicano type accent that, that feels very organic in the film. Uh, how do you go about that? How does one, how do you personally go about, you know, uh, Choosing, picking, feeling that that well, I, I wanted to. It's 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 what's made up. It's it's not made up, but it's made up, right? I had to find a kind of like a happy medium between going. I didn't want to go too charactery, uh, um, and also kind of like uh, um, there was there's uh, there's code switching too within it. You know what I mean? Mm. Like in the movie, like I'm kind of code switch when I'm talking to Lonnie, and I or code switch when I'm talking to the execs. I'm trying to. You know, there's people do it all the time. Mm-hmm. Right. And throughout the years and, and Richard has a little bit of, of his own accent. And I'm sure it was deeper um, when he was younger. But because he's you know been in the corporate world for, you know, 40 years, right. whatever it is. Um, but he's at the essence of it. And he's still him. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, just, even I kind of like we kind of had a happy medium, found a happy medium where it worked. Um, and when you watch the movie, you'll see the voiceover, too. It's like there's a whole. Like there's it's, the the movie is his point of view, right? So there's like fantasy elements in it, and there's like the really dramatic stuff. So 
um, it was uh, just kind of figuring it out, feeling it out. Just make sure it didn't turn into a character caricature. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like I didn't want it to be um, like overdone. Right. Like or or too stereotypical. Yeah. Right. Kind yeah. of fall down, fall into well, that. That's a cat. That's a that's one of the biggest compliments we we get in the movie is that it feels authentic. That we're not making fun of anybody. We're not uh, we're not uh, um, playing into the stereotypes that we normally get played into. Yeah. And even though there's cholos in it, even though there's like I play a janitor, you know, and there's it's it feels real it feels like organic yeah it feels yeah. like we watch everyone knows like I, everyone feels like they're watching their their tío and your tía and your mom and dad your cousins yeah. whatever it is it feels like it almost feels like you're just there it's happening in in your living room mm-hmm. you talked about uh how you were going through this like verge of of breakdown uh during the shoot what are you what were you doing then to take care of your of your mental health and and what are you are what are you doing now i mean the breakdowns was is just like there was so there was um there was uh just a lot you know what i mean there's just a, a lot overwhelming but there was never a doubt that it wasn't my part yeah. there was never um i never had imposter syndrome mm-hmm. and i had these conversations with myself it's like what's going on it's like it is like this, I, I def, this is definitely my part. Like I have um, no doubt that that I shouldn't be here, right? Um, and it was never that. It was just a lot. It was just a lot. You know what I mean? So I, I worked out every day. Um, I had great conversations with with um, Eva and Annie and all the guys. Like everyone, we all had great conversations every day. And it was never really about me kind of like having a, like a breakdown because I wasn't like having a nervous panic attack breakdown. It was just just all here, you know mm. what I mean? It was always all here. And it was, whether it was, um, um, just a lot of work or me concentrating and yeah, uh, it was nothing bad. It just was like just passion, just, just, just yeah, wanting like, to do a really good just job. Just wanting like, to yeah. do, do a good job. You yeah. know, like this was a, a big opportunity. There's a lot of weight on my shoulders. One, because it's a, it is a big budget movie. And, um, a lot of people are depending on me to be prepared every day when I get to work. And I had a lot of big monologue scenes and it was, plenty of emotional scenes and those stuff that I was figuring out and, you know, figuring the, the, the accent, you know, mm-hmm. some, uh, making sure the accent never dropped. And, uh, cause that's not my act. That's, you know, I talk like this and I'm, I'm, I'm from Wyoming. <laughs> you know? It's like, I didn't grow up in LA. Like yeah. I'm, this is like, I'm, I'm, it's like, I'm figuring it out. Yeah. It's like character. I'm a character actor mostly. Yeah. Um, so I, I think the, the reality of it is like, there was one day when, when we were on set, we're getting ready to shoot a big scene. And like you said, Annie's full of energy. She comes in and she comes and she just puts her hand on my chest and, and whatever she did, she was like, she, the, the, the feeling started to come up. I'm like, not today. You know, it's like with love. She goes, Oh, okay. You know, cause I didn't want to, I didn't want to start crying for, for no reason. What if, whatever it was, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, cause it was a lot there. Yeah. And, um, and her and I are just like, we're, we see, like we're like this all the time so um but you know i took care of myself there wasn't anything there wasn't anything i couldn't deal with what do you do today what do you do like on a on a daily basis to, to take care of your mental health i have a lot of great conversations with friends yeah yeah like we have a really a lot of great conversations eva and i are, are really close and devon and i are close and annie and i talk all the time we have like really deep conversations on a, on a weekly basis um uh, i work out a ton um you know i meditate yoga uh like I, I a lot of really great stuff i find online it's amazing dude yeah because yeah, you you you, ha- you have to let that stuff out right yeah like you you can't just have it live here i mean for me it's like you know you can talk to as many people as you want to about whatever whatever you're going through and you can get some good nice little nuggets or i, I yeah. call it planting seeds um um but you know who's the, who's the person you talk to most in your life uh my best friend nope who yourself who? yourself Right. And so the conversations that I've had with myself, whether it's a, a result of seeds that have been planted from things that I've read or seen or watched or had conversations with other people, like my big re- uh, revelations were when I've had a conversation with myself. Right. When I was doing um, uh, the Pee Wee Herman show mm-hmm. in New York, now we had done a run of it in LA for about a month and then. Paul called Paul Rubens called up and says, Hey, you want to go to, want to go to Broadway? I'm like, 
yeah, dude. Um, but when we, he goes, okay, so we're going to have, it's going to, we're going to rehearse for five days. We're going to do tech for like another five days and we're going to put it up like this, <laughs> this really elaborate variety show with dancing and singing and all kinds of stuff. And, and, uh, and, uh, and a lot of my stuff was new. My dances were all new. I'm not a trained dancer. Like I, like I said, I didn't, I didn't grow up wanting to be an actor was, and I wasn't a dancer. Um, and there was a, there was a point where I'm like, probably day three or something like that, where I, I go, what, what, what am I, I couldn't call Like nobody would pick up the phone. Everyone was busy. And like, well, I'm going to ruin this play. Like, I don't, I, I can't figure my it out. I can't figure out what, like the dances are hard and I'm, I, what am I doing? Like I was having imposter syndrome. Like, I'm, mm. I, I, what am I doing? And on the back page of my script, right before my first scene, I started writing. I started just the worst stuff. It's like, what am I doing? I'm going to ruin this play. Like, I'm not a dancer. I don't, I, I'm not, like, I'm, like, I'm a terrible actor, blah, blah, blah. And like, as it starts going, I'm going like, what am I talking about? Like, I, I, I barely worked for this and I'm on Broadway. Like I've auditioned for maybe three plays in my life and there's actors who have been working all their life to get on Broadway. It's like, oh, this dance is going to be fun. And by the time I'm writing really small because I'm like, I talked myself off this ledge. And after that, I'm like, the gates opened and I had a great time. You know what I mean? And then I got featured in like Broadway.com as like one of the actors to, to check out. And da, 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 da. it's like, like and there's been moments like that throughout my life, not just my career that I've been able to talk myself talk to myself and figure it out and like big epiphanies that that um like you know you're you're your you're best teacher you can get yeah. get a lot of advice from other people and other sources but at the end of the day you're your best teacher you were you were journaling yeah it, it, at on the back of your script yeah <laughs> yeah i wish i still had that script i think someone stole it from me it's like a, <laughs> someone yeah. had a script like what is this yeah this is <laughs> this is good <laughs> that that see that's something that is the fact that it just came sort of natural to you man that's that's a that's a quite the gift there yeah and yeah, and, and, and 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 blessings for yeah. sure i think it's a past life i, I believe in past lives i yeah. think it's a past life there's something in my past life one of my past lives that was um i think a healer of some sort and um like um i don't um he learned in many ways, like in medicine and, and um, um, homeopathic and, and therapy and, and stuff like that. Because I have some really got great conversations with people all the time. They're like, where'd you learn this? I go, I don't know. What, were, what would your, your parents do? Like, what, what was their, their craft or their career my, or their well, job? My, parents, my mom was kind of a stay-at-home mom. I mean, she, did, she ran the gamut of jobs from housekeeping to selling chocolates in the grocery store to whatever you know and then my dad um he did construction and uh, worked on ranches and he put himself through school to do um auto body repair so he and he was always a good mechanic and uh, so he would buy he'd buy and sell cars and i kind of do that now too buy and sell cars but i don't nice i don't do the work i have someone else do the work <laughs> um um but my they you know they did whatever they could and my dad he emigrated from mexico so he didn't have his citizenship for a long time he was a green card but didn't have a citizenship so he couldn't get like some of the other higher paying union jobs and like working on the railroad or something like that like some of my other uncles did so he did whatever he could truck driver he's a truck driver too when when you told your your traditional mexican parents it sounds like they're they're traditional my dad's from mexico my mom's from wyoming her and i were born in the same oh wyoming yeah when you tell your your traditional mexican father that you're going to to become an actor what what was that like they they were co like cool you know what i mean like they i i they always knew that i was gonna leave you know my mom thought my mom told me she goes i thought you'd be gone eight months and, and come back and that's 20 23 years later you know um but they were always supportive of me but they and, and i think there's still a little bit of them that they don't now that they're seeing some like i'm showing sending my mom pictures of billboards and stuff like that, that they're they're tripping and they think it's really cool and like now friend like all of her friends and people in in, in Rollins, Wyoming are are texting was like, Oh, I can't wait to see your son's movie and blah 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 and um so that and they get they get the like the like the fame aspect of it that yeah. But it's like there's a there's a whole business side of it that because just because they're not around they don't right. they don't understand. So like they uh, you know, they 
it's just there's a, there's a still a gap, you know what I mean? Um, but they always knew that I wanted to leave. I used to show pictures of the city to my mom when I was five years old, saying like, I, I'm going to move to the city. And wow. I was living, and I grew up in a town of like 800 people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Past life for sure. Past life for sure. Yeah. Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. You're in this film now, Mother. How does that come about? How was that for you? It was a, so the audition process, um, uh, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but. Um, do it, do it, do it. Do it. Uh, <laughs> so I, I had read, um, I got the audition for the part um, of one of her love interests. Yeah. And I was reading the script. I'm like, this is set in Cuba. And I called my, my people and said, like, they want a Cuban accent with the Spanish? What do, what do they want? They're like, yeah, yeah, they want. Cuban accent. I'm like, okay, let me see if, what I can do. Uh, and then I call to my friends who, who, who do Cuban accents, like translate this for me, mm. like, translate the Spanish because it was written in English. Um, translate the Spanish for me and like, give me some like how to do the accent. And it was hard. Like Cuban, the Cuban accent's hard, especially I barely speak Mexican Spanish, Yeah, you know? Um, and, and eventually it got to the point where they wanted to audition. So the tape so fast, I'm like, I'm just going to do it in Mexican Spanish. If they like it, then we can work on it and we'll go from there. Mm. So it's, it's the best I can do. So I sent in a really great tape uh, and I didn't hear anything back. I go, it makes sense. Jen probably wants, you know, tall, actual Cuban guy or someone that does speak Cuban Spanish. Makes sense. Shot flaming hot. Took about a month break. Went to see my mom. Traveled around a little bit. I was like, all right, let's get back to work. Like, what's still alive? And then, and I had just gotten an audition for a different part in the mother. And I go, um, I go, is it Cuban Spanish still? And they're like, yeah, I go, I don't, I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to do it. Cause I don't want, you know, flaming hot to come out. And then I do this. Cause I thought flaming hot's going to be out sooner. I don't want this to be the follow up. And if I do crappy job then then that that's not a good look. Mm -hmm. And, um, I go see if the other part's still available. So they asked and they go, look, they want to see your tape. So I sent them my tape and I, the feedback I got my manager call and she goes, they fucking loved your tape. They go, casting went crazy for your tape. I go, okay. And she goes, but they just cast Guy Garcia Bernal. I go, all right, good choice. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. He's great. And I go, okay. And they go, they never saw your original tape. I go, Ex excuse me? They never saw your tape. I'm like, how, how does that happen? She goes, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I go, Okay, so, and she goes, they loved your tape so much that they, they want to see if you're interested to, you know, try to get an offer on the tarantula part. And I go, if it's Cuban Spanish, I don't, I don't know. And they call me back to go, Nikki doesn't care about Spanish. You can do whatever Spanish you want. Nice. We don't know what Gael's going to do, so just, you can do what you want. I said, yeah, cool, see what happens. So I get a call and say, Nikki wants to meet you. She wants to Zoom with you because she's already in, uh, in Canada. And then she goes, does she just want to meet her? She want to do the tape? She goes, if you can do, if you can do the audition, she'd, she'd really love that. So I did the, I did my couple of versions of it, like a handful of, uh, of versions of it. And I go, dope. Second I hung up, they, they called me and go, what's his availability? Get quote, da, 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 da. Um, and I got the part. Um, and it was the part that I didn't, like the part I did now. And um, um, I get up there and I'm on set and we shot the, we shot the torture scene. First, it was because I was a, that was shot in a in a in a house in Vancouver, um, and I was, they had a, a they gave me a Spanish dialect coach, and I go let's let's do Cuban Spanish, mm. let's let's try it because it's only one scene. It's like and I'm, I'm beat up anyway, and it's like I'm in my mouth and Cuban Spanish like marbles in your mouth anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and we shot it and it, it sounds pretty, it sounds pretty good. It sounds, this Cuban Spanish sounds okay. Um, a, a version of it. I'm not going to say I did great at it, but it wasn't bad. Um, but she was, Jen was great. Did he do different versions of it? No, I just did the Cuban. You just did the Cuban. I just did the Cuban version. Um, um, now whether it comes across to Cuban Cubans is Cuban. Um, uh, but some of my friends who've seen it, they go, no, it was great. Um, um, but Jen was great. Like she was super, super lovely. Um, she really cares about the craft. She really, she, um, um, we, we, you know, we bounced off of each other. Uh, she punched me in the face once. Um, 
<laughs> like literally, she literally punched, me in the face punched once. you in the face. She, me. she got me. She got me in the face once. We finished the scene. She goes, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I got fucking told you were gonna hit me." <laughs> she goes, "You moved." I go, "I'm supposed to move." <laughs> Um, but it was all good. She barely got me. Uh, <laughs> but it was great. No, it was a good experience. And Nikki Caro's um great director, and I think I think the movie's a success, so Yeah. Congrats on that too, man. Thanks. You you've been you've been living on Cloud Nine these, these last couple yeah, of years. Yeah, man, it's a good year, you know. Year, it's, yeah. It, it's funny because people think I've been doing like back to back stuff and I, I barely worked last year, twenty twenty two. Like last year, twenty twenty two. I barely worked. I worked with my buddy uh, Michael Olmos's movie uh, Murder City I think that's what it's called um, we shot that in Mexico City but other than that I finished The Mother early in the year and then I, those are the only two gigs I did but everything's coming out one after the other now so everyone goes dang you've been busy I'm like yeah but it's, everything's just coming out at the same time was this your first time working with uh, Jennifer yeah 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 how, how does that how does that I'm sure you're you grew up a fan sure like, how, how does that come about? Like, do you just, you just act super, like, pro and super, like, whatever? Oh, cool, you're J-Lo. I mean, I, uh, <laughs> my buddy Wilmer is friends with her, and she goes, oh, she's really great. She's super nice. And, like, and of course, you know, it's Jennifer Lopez, and she's gorgeous and very, um, she's very kind. She's yeah. very kind to me, and um, and she just wants, to, just wants to do good work, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if I had a question or, it was like, and also, too, I've been, I've been doing it long enough that, like, I'm not going to fold just because it's Jen, right. you know what I mean? So we, it was, it was good. It was all good. And then Omari Hardwick was there and we were like, we're buds too. And it was good. I love that. So we, we've talked a little bit about your past, right? Yeah. Talk a little bit about your present. Talk to me about what's next. What would you like to be next for yourself? Uh, uh, I've been developing some stuff. I've been developing some stuff for a while and I have a, I have a really cool series that my buddy Oscar Alvarez and I are, are producing. It's a, um, it's a show called Chicano Squad. It's a working title, but it's based on the um, these five Mexican American cops who were um, who were brought up from being beat cops or desk cops or or un, un, inexperienced homicide cops to be to, to form this all Latino homicide division in the Houston Police Department in the early '80s um, because none of the none of the cops spoke Spanish. That were all the detectives spoke Spanish, so they brought these guys in, and this is a true story. Um, so we're working on that, and uh, this is probably going to light a fire under the people who are trying to do the same thing. Um, uh, and I got a bunch of other pro like a bunch of other stuff I'm trying to direct. Next, I got you know a couple of ideas that I'm trying to do, and uh, definitely get some TV shows going. So like you know trying to trying to build an empire. I love that. Yeah. What's the the dream project for you? Oh man. Um. There's so many. Like, I, I, I do want to continue doing comedy. I just got done doing uh, Alexander and Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad. It's called, I think, Road Trip now. I think is what it's called. Um, with Eva, her and I play mom and dad. So that was fun. Um, and it was comedy, like a family film, comedy. I just want to run the gamut, you know? I would love to, I would love to do Chicano Squad. I'd love to do a handful of other projects. Um, be more on the other side of the camera. Uh, but as far as acting stuff, it's like, do let me be weird. I haven't got a chance to be like weird yet, you know. <laughs> like do weird, like weird stuff, you know. What's, what what would I you consider weird? I don't know. Like something that's uh, uh um you know anything Joaquin Phoenix would do, mm. or um mm. or Tom Hardy would do, you know what I mean? Stuff that that uh, I would love a chance to to take huge huge risks and and um, and and just have fun with it because again it's supposed to be fun yeah you know what i mean and if it changes people's lives or it, for one way or the other great but it's, again it's like a lot of these things are um uh, it's the entertainment business we, we need our chances to fail too yeah. you know what i mean we need our chances to to be able to go and take big risks and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't but you know it doesn't mean we don't get more chances for sure do you ever see yourself just living behind the camera or are you you don't you don't think you ever let that Man, go i do I just i don't know i really i've directed some of my own things and i kind of uh i worked the, with a on a movie that i produced that him the director and i worked very closely with uh and i realized i could i could direct stuff i could direct a, a movie um and i understand action and i i 
you know, every, ch- every now and then I'll, I'll have a chance to um, kind of help out and have ideas and, and, and stuff that I'm saying works, you know, it's, I always, of course, always pass it to the director or whoever's in charge. Um, but it's, I, I enjoy that. Uh, I don't know if I'd live there because I still um, enjoy being in front of the camera. Like Ben Stiller is another great example. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's behind the camera. He's doing some really, really great stuff. Um, some, you know, quirky and, and some, a lot of it, a lot of it works. Some of it doesn't, you know, like Tropic Thunder. Fucking fantastic film. You know what I mean? He got to do a lot of weird stuff. Some of it's offensive and, um, but it works. Yeah. You know what I mean? It can't, can't be people pleasing everything. So yeah. it's got to make some people mad. Uh, do you do you see yourself um, writing more? I, I mean, do write. Yeah, I do write. Yeah, I will be writing more. I enjoy writing. Um, as a, I think Matt Damon had a, he was talking about Jack Nicholson, where Jack Nicholson looks back at him one day during a break and goes, "The reason I'm a, a great actor is because I'm a great writer, mm. right?" And I enjoy the writing process. And when even I would rewrite something or figure something out. Um, um, I would like to write something with her actually because she writes faster than I, I do. And she's like more of throwing stuff out and, and I, and I, and I kind of like to uh, polish and go a little bit deeper with it sometimes. Uh, so we write at a different, different pace, but I, I, I really enjoy the writing process. What's something about you that most people don't know about? <sighs> um, I don't know. I'm pretty transparent. Yeah. I'm pretty transparent. Um, uh, I think people realize, I think people realize that I have, um, that I don't, Oh, how does it, what does Eva call? How does I can't remember exactly how she said it, but like, I, I don't like dancing in the way that I don't necessarily need to people please. You know what I mean? I, I like to just be real. Um, I try to be gentle about it most times, but, and I'm really open to being, um, to conversations, but I just be real, like ha- have the real conversation just f- through my own trials and, uh, mistrials of, um, uh, of my own communication. It's like, just, let's just, let's just talk about whatever we need to talk about. And, um, and it's risk, right? Risk to, to, to any relationship. Mm-hmm. But I just think that's, I think people have realized that more over the years like oh jesse's like he'll call you out or he does i don't mind being called out either like please call me out i like having a conversation so you're about 20 years in roughly now right 20, 23 23 years in how do you stay motivated dude um man there's been plenty of times i almost quit yeah after i did from dust till dawn there was i had a dry spell for kind of like almost three years Mm. um two and a half three years and those i have come again i had conversations with my friends and and buddies who were working or had dry spells too and like what are we gonna what what am i gonna do like i'm not working right now i have a mortgage to pay for and i got like bills and taxes and all kinds of stuff i'm like what am i gonna do i need to work and i'm starting like starting to run out of money and um and 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 end up being a conversation with myself again. So I was having a moment and I was going, this, this is, this is stupid. Like I, what am I doing? Like, uh, even after su- some success being, you know, one of the leads in the TV series and having quinceanera go Sundance and blah, 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 blah. Right. Like, what am I doing? And I go, okay, what's the, what's the alternative? What's the alternative to quitting? Just stopping. Um, I go, I could build houses, I could sell cars, I could find other ways of making money, start an Amazon store, any, any number of things, um, which I still may all do. Um, but, but is that a creatively fulfilling life? Well, I, would I be happy with that? And I go, no. Okay, so what else do I do? I say, I want to direct. Okay, is that a, is that a reasonable um, alternative to quitting acting? Will that make me money right away? No, it's not. Um, it could ha- it will happen, but it's not a reasonable solution to quitting acting. Mm. It's like, all right. All right, what would the 21-year-old version of Jesse say? 
So when I was, even before I was starting, I decided to start up, I would see like Jacob Vargas on mm -hmm. Friday, right? Okay, that guy's funny. He's really good. Like, I, I like that guy. Or, no more locked doors. Yeah, no more locked doors. Um, uh, that's funny. <laughs> Aztec warrior. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. Um, or Nicholas, Nicholas Gonzalez. I would see him or I would see like, uh, Yancey Aries or I would see, um, any, any number of all these guys, these guys are not now that I looked up to, it's like, these guys have great careers. Like, well, I look up to those guys and now I'm, they're all my buds. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're, it's, we're all in the same circles. We're all supporting each other. And I go, okay, what would the 21 year old version of me say to the 40 year old version of me? Mm. Would he look at me and the stuff that I've done and he would he go, would he be proud of that guy? Would he want that guy to keep going? Would he, if, if he met him on a set or on the street or something like that, would he be like stoked? to meet that guy and I go yeah I'd be I'd I'd be super proud of that guy and I go okay okay that's settled let's go let's go you asked what would 21 year old as 40 year old you what would 40 year old you tell 21 year old you um Start writing and directing. Just pick up a camera. This can be anything. And eventually I did. But, and you know, also it's, now it's easier because everyone's holding a camera in their pocket. Um, but the one thing, and, and when I was going to school, when I, when I moved to Atlanta, is that I always wanted to direct, but I never had the confidence. Because I felt like I had it, but I didn't, I didn't, I had the, the, the ambition in my head, but I never took the step in classes. Go like, let me direct this scene, right? Even though I didn't know what I was doing, nobody nobody knows what's doing. Reality of it, everyone has uh, everyone has different levels of experience, but everyone's kind of flying by the seat of their pants. Yeah, does this work? I don't know. Just try it. Like, what's the worst that can happen? Another take, failed movie, failed TV show. Okay, let's do another one. Who cares, right? Same thing with my auditions, like. I, I, the, when I changed my attitude for my auditions going like, okay, I'm, I'm now going to stop trying to do auditions where I'm doing the version where I think they want. Mm. This was years ago. I figured this out years ago. I go, I'm going to do my version. And if they, cause at the essence, they, they like you for you, mm -hmm. right? Whatever you can bring to the table. And they like something fresh. I would anyway, when I'm looking at auditions, I would look at auditions and I, I like something fresh, messy, real, mm -hmm. um, doesn't have to be perfect. I don't care about that stuff. If you make strong choices, I make strong choices and it'd be weird, completely off, be completely wrong. I've booked, I've booked when I go, I bombed that. <laughs> there's no, there's no <laughs> way I'm booking that. Yeah. Yeah. I get the offer. I'm going like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I booked Narcos when I thought, I thought I bombed the Narcos audition. Yeah. And they go, no, we loved it. Like you never know. <laughs> so if I just do me, eventually eventually some of so it's going to pay off at some point and at least at the end of the day you go like i did me yeah yeah no it, that, it's so important by the way my, my audition to be on the radio at power i thought i bombed i i nearly called to try to re-audition oh, okay like, hey, can we can we erase that and can we try it again and no I, I you know we got the call but something that that you said that's so important is that at the end of the day they're going to like you for you yeah Right. And I feel like that's, that's sort of the, the ongoing, um, way of, 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 of looking at, at life. Like when it comes to any career, mm -hmm. to any path, any career journey that, that you decide to get into, they're going to, they're going to like you for you. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's, that's sort of the secret here. Yeah. It's, it's to be yourself. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would have told myself is to live more. Mm. We often live. We put our life on hold for work. Work will be there. Work will eventually be there. But if, you know, the work starts getting interesting when you live. You know, you gotta, you gotta have life experience. You gotta have your heart broken. You gotta, you gotta take risks. And I'm still learning to do that. 
Or you got to travel if you can. Um, I'm st- again, I'm still learning to do that. Like I, I'm a homebody. Like I have my place in Austin. I like to be there. I go to the gym. I'll go out sometimes, but I like to be home. But it's also good to just get out. Yeah. And when you, by the time, the hardest part of getting out is getting out. <laughs> you know? <laughs> just committing to getting out. Yeah. 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 Dude, you're talking to me. You're talking to me yeah. right now. <laughs> I can tell. You're blushing. Homebody. <laughs> just just want to chill. Yeah. Um, live more. Work less. Right here. Yeah. Uh, before I let you go, um, we have we usually do rapid fire. Today we're gonna do rapid flaming hot. Okay. Favorite Spanish word? Chingao. Chingao. <laughs> Salsa roja o verde? Uh, roja. Favorite Latino food dish? Um, uh, chocolate chip cookies. Hmm. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> With a, my mom's empanadas. Ooh. What's inside of the empanadas? Well, old school version is uh, some cheese, some beans, uh, refried beans, and some ground beef. Mm. Now I would change it. Now it's all healthy. <laughs> uh, best singer of all time? Um, oh, man. Um... See the music. I'm 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 not good at the music. Uh, no, like you personally, like your personal taste. I know. I can't. I can. I'm uh, Linda Ronstadt. Okay. Favorite rapper of all time? Probably Tupac. Pac. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Best song to play at a party. Someone gives you the ox. What are you playing? Ah, it depends on the moods. Um, probably WAP. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> funny story. <laughs> funny story. My, my, I don't know if I want to hear that. Yeah, the the, funny story. It's a funny story. The makeup <laughs> artist, my makeup artist, Taylor, for, for Flame and Hot, she's very, she's like, she's very, like, uh, um, uh, it's not conservative, but, like, she's, um, uh, uh, so she likes to listen to jazz. She doesn't like... I curse words. She doesn't like, um, um, anyway, you get it. Uh, there's one day before she, right before she got there and I was like, tell, telling one of the girls, Amber, I'm going to watch this. And I, and as soon as she walks in, I go, Amber just told me the song you like to listen to before everyone gets in. And she walks in, she goes, what? And I played it in the trailer <laughs> and it's like, started playing. And she goes, no, that is not what I, that is not. And I go, I heard it was, and I keep turning it up, and she <laughs> is so, the trailer's dying, because she's so, like, she does not like yeah, the curse yeah, words, very and down, it's about right? as dirty as it gets, <laughs> so it was hilarious. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Lastly, what's a nickname of yours that no one really knows about? Oh, my buddies in high school used to call me Gopher. Gopher? Yeah. Yeah, they used to call me Gopher. I don't know why. I think Jason, Jason Martinez, who, who named me, um, I don't know if it's because I popped up and grabbed it grabbed a football when it was being tossed over my head, just grabbed it, popped up and, yeah. and grabbed it with one hand. And he goes, hey, what's up, Gopher? I'm like, and it's stuck. Wow. Yeah, everyone called me Gopher. Yeah. <laughs> so off, off one moment. Yeah, off one moment. Like, I, I, that's, the only reason, that's the only way I could think of, like, well, that's how he, he named me that. And my friends, some of my friends in, 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 in Rollins still call me Gopher. Man. Yeah. Well, I said this very respectfully. Gopher. Thank you so much for coming to Mondo and Friends. My pleasure. <laughs> My brother, make some noise for Jesse Garcia. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, man. My and uh, much success, much love. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jesse. Thank you so much to you for listening and watching Mondo and Friends presented by mm-hmm. Verizon. Verizon. You forgot who your sponsor was? No, I, I thought you were picking my nose. You were I right? was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No worries. You can do it again if you want to. <laughs> now we're good, dude. <laughs>